Well, more than the store of value, I think um, it's a um, transfer uh, value method. Mm -hmm. uh, better than the actual one because uh, you can move money worldwide using uh, crypto without restrictions or with less restrictions than the financial traditional system. Um, of course, when you are from a country that have a hyperinflation like Argentina, Venezuela, now in Colombia we are expecting uh, superior inflation and uh, devaluation of the local currency, you try to find alternative like the US dollar. Um, when you don't find a local alternative for using the traditional way, you need to jump into new financial ecosystem like blockchain and these kind of technologies. Welcome back to another episode of Bitfinex Talks. I'm your host, Ricardo Martinez. Today, my guest is Andres Tobon, who is the CEO of FE Finance. FE Finance is a fintech startup that offers a crypto debit card in Latin America. Andres, thank you for coming on the show. How are you doing today? Thank you, Ricardo, uh, for having me today here. Uh, it's a pleasure for all the audience. Uh, well, very, very pleasure to be here. Um, you know, if finding it's more than just a debit card. Okay, let's get into it. Tell me about Effie. Yeah, well, was, we are creating a neo bank uh, around all Latin America, focusing on crypto services and connecting with other fiat services too. So basically, we take the best of the of each world, the fiat world and the crypto world, and combine in one ecosystem. So we offer digital dollars accounts for Latin American individuals and corporations too. Um, that's basically wallet services. We offer a Visa crypto international card that you can charge using USDT, for example. Uh, you have other investment vehicles for having yields on your digital assets. Um, we have uh, on and off ramps that you can use for receiving and sending international transactions between United States and Latin American countries, Europe and Latin American countries. And, you know, a, a complete portfolio, including uh, even crypto chains into the platform where you can use and get for example, uh, Tether Gold, that it's one of our lastest uh, listings uh, in the platform, you can have uh, that asset into our ecosystem. So yeah, we are, we are creating a complete neobank and ecosystem using all the technology available from fiat and crypto. You're, you're a Colombian guy, but FE is based here in Colombia or where is it based in and where does it operate? Which Latin American countries are you guys offering services in? Well, I'm from Colombia, of course, uh, but FE Finance is regulated under Salvador laws. So we operate oh, okay. from El Salvador to international framework. So we basically offer services in all the countries in Latin America. We even have uh, clients from Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Argentina, uh, Peru. Now that uh, Bolivia um, raised all the, the crypto bans that they have in the, in the loan, we are entering with campaigns. And the key here is that any Latin American citizenship uh, can get our services just using their passport. So basically, we don't have restriction in that way because it's an international service provided from El Salvador to all Latin American countries. What kind of fees do you guys have for... Uh using the debit card like say i load it up with tether or tether gold or something like that and i want to use it in commerce well it's very simple uh, business model we just take one percent on fee when you mm -hmm. charge your card using uct but guess what we are uh very close to launch our own token that will help to pay commissions uh with less price less than one percent will be in the future with the FE token that also it's a ERC20 token supported by Ethereum and will be able very soon uh, FE Finance. Okay. Can you tell us a little more about the token? Like what, 
when will it be available? How can people get their hands on it? Um, yeah, sure. Use cases. Does it you know, it's it's um, um, the evolution of and the complement of all the ecosystem that we create because this token enables uh, allows the users to get on more benefits, uh, better rates on all the services on the platform, um, including the access to exchange between other coins and everything. Um, also, it's uh, right now available in pre-sale stage. Uh, you can get more info in the official website uh, of EFI Token and the official website of EFI Finance. Um, basically, we are uh, planning the ICO launch for September, October of this year. Uh, but now we are on pre-sale stage. Um, this token complements all the offer uh, that we are leading behind the real war assets and the tokenization of even other structures that we manage, for example, all the English factory platform that we administrate with other of our brands, that it's uh, really operative and fully operative in Colombia and Panama right now. Um, basically, you can get access to premium features using the EFI token that we are launching on the platform and a lot of benefits. So. It's uh, an invitation for learning more about EFI token and what we are doing behind that. With the EFI wallet that you mentioned, how many uh, crypto assets do you guys currently offer services for? Well, today I think uh, are like 10 or 12 crypto assets, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Terrible, USDT in different networks uh, like Tron Network, Ethereum Network, Polygon Network. We are very close to launch on Ton Network. Um, okay. And this is, this is a very good deal because now we are planning to launch a service where you can charge your car directly from Telegram using Ton Network and UCT over Ton Network. Um, that would be very cool. Um, we have also Solana incorporated, integrated, um, and we are listing other uh, coins like Alloy, for example. It's one of the common coins that will be listed on, on our platform. Uh, many others, but there are like from 20 to 12, I, I guess. You mentioned that you have a range of fintech services as well as crypto services can you kind of go over which fintech offerings you guys have for fe customers yeah well um at fe finance basically the connection with other of our platforms in the group is the in fixed term investment options that basically okay. you can fix digital assets that that are invested into uh invoice factory pools that invoice factoring is managed by other of our platforms called Finti that basically have a credit insurance. It's operating uh, under a trust to manage the transparency on the allocations. And basically it's serving an um, unserved sector that, it, that are the SMEs in Latin America. So we are trying to connect uh, crypto capital with SME, SME's capital needs in different countries in Latin, starting by Colombia, that we know very well the market and we have a good penetration with high rates. Okay. And then like, how would I take advantage of that? Like I would invest money and, and get like a return on that? Or? Yes. Basically, there are uh, fixed term investments. Um, we offer uh, fixed yields that are near to 8 to 12%, basically the range, uh, annual return, of course. Uh, and, but they are like very conservative investment options based on the functionality and the focusing directed on uh, the invoice factory on SMEs. Okay. And for those investments, like the the differentiation in the rates is that due to like more risk exposure or something like that no it, it really depends on the amount and the fixed term time so if you fix only for 30 days of course you will have less uh return than if you fix uh, one year the option okay and then 
for the crypto services that Effie is offering, you mentioned the debit card, you mentioned uh, support for various crypto assets. Are there any other crypto services that you guys are offering? Yeah, of course, it's exchange uh, from different assets. So uh, it's we are very close to launch um, a crypto chain service where you can change between Bitcoin, Ethereum, to Ether, to other different coins. And, um, and they, they are like basically um, market operations. So we don't have leverage or, or any stop loss or trading options, but we offer um, swap in, in between different coins. And are you guys going to continue adding uh, support for more and more assets or are you guys trying to keep it like around a, a number that you guys have now? Well, you know, the market um, is the boss. So we listen to our customers and if they want to see a specific coin listed or if we have uh, like, you know, the, the um, market needs that is requesting some specific assets, we will do that. And we have the capacity and we are able to, to list that token in three days. With the crypto debit card, can you kind of tell us about the card and how it works and all that kind of details? Yeah, sure. It's a Visa international card. It's um, basically under um, Panama jurisdiction. So we issued the card from Panama as an international product. Um, you can take the card only with your passport and you will have a monthly spend limit of 10K. And if you want to raise that limit, you just need to send uh, additional proof of funds or support into your uh, wallet. Um, we can create a specific transactional profile that you can spend if you have the specific support, for example, 100K per month. So we don't have a specific limit uh, in the card, but by our uh, risk program, we request additional support. For rising the 10k limit that it's the entry you mentioned that uh you can charge the card with tether is is it only tether or can you also use all the other uh assets which effie supports well today today it's only tether we are working for a lot of different assets that you can charge uh, but with the swap and exchange service we are providing you can just convert from Bitcoin in the same platform to Tether and charge with the card. Okay. And how long does it take to charge? Is it pretty quick? No, it's immediately. Uh, under 5K, you can receive the, the charge immediately. Um, over 5K, maybe from one day to other. Because we need to double check on large transactions um, for prevent any fraud or anything. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Are there... Other additional services that you guys are offering that we haven't covered yet? Well, we are up to launch a real world asset marketplace where basically we are um, um, sponsoring different infrastructure projects and all the real world assets uh, and opportunities that, that are connected with the EFI token and everything. So you will see in the coming months, uh, different a, a, a complete offering and a complete portfolio of different real world asset projects listed on there. When you say real world assets, uh, what do you mean by that? Like real estate uh, developments and stuff like that, or for uh, example, for example, like, real estate development, um, for example, um, stocks in the market uh, that we tokenize and convert into an opportunity to take in, in blockchain, uh, different options. Okay, cool. Let's talk about that. Like what sort of uh, financial markets are you going to be tokenizing? Well, um, mainly real estate, uh, financial options, for example. So we tokenize our own pool of invoice factoring. Uh, so that invoices are tokenized and we sell in fractions. And that's an opportunity to participate on this specific market. Uh, we have in the pipeline uh, some projects like, um, you know, the race on other startups. Uh, they tokenize the instrument on the race and um, bonds in the stock market. 
um, a lot of things. So, so like the S and P, uh, Nasdaq, yeah, Dow, yeah, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we, we will combine these axes into fraction on on, on different real poor asset uh, opportunities that you have. In what kind sectors. of opportunities do you see for like this market that's emerging uh, for tokenizing real world assets? You know, it's it's um it's like the new narrative uh, on the venture capital and, and the high net worth individuals. So we are trying to create a place where high net worth people uh, feel comfortable with the opportunities they see. And we are creating different options to connect even more the crypto with the financial side. So um, I think putting the traditional um, narrative on real estate, on the stocks, markets, and everything converted into the crypto version that it's the tokenization, it will uh, attract more um, institutional investors and more high net worth individuals to take um, the, the complete portfolio and the other kind of offers we serve. So we are basically a um, financial super app that combines the crypto and the fiat side to deliver um, complete uh, real uh, experience to the end, end, end client. For the FE token, which is going to launch later this year, you mentioned that it's going to be an ERC-20 token that's on Ethereum, but are you also going to support like other EVM compatible chains and be like chain agnostic, or are you guys just going to focus on being on Ethereum? Well, for the beginning, only Ethereum, but we are planning and we have in the roadmap to launch in different networks. Um, we have in the list to launch in Polygon. Um, basically, uh, we have a partnership with Rootstock, that it's a network over Bitcoin. Uh, mm -hmm. We are planning to launch in uh, Solana too. So different networks for connecting on different uh, alliances in the market that we are planning to announce. Okay. And I know you guys are kind of like a centralized fintech app, but have you uh, put any thought into offering like any DeFi offerings like once the token launches? Well, we will create DEX pools for people who can go and just liquidate. That's uh, a, a fact. Uh, but yeah, our main business is a centralized business, but focusing on caring about the client and caring about the reserves and everything for getting all the transparency we need. Yeah, no, it's super interesting what you guys are doing. I like how you guys are, are really making an effort to kind of bridge the gap between the legacy financial world and the crypto financial world. Yeah, and you know, that gap is very long in Latin America because <laughs> um, you, you have uh, all the banks trying to ban the crypto sector and because they don't understand. That's the only reason. And when you don't understand an industry, you just reject on that. Yeah, what what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think it's because a lot of the the Latin American currencies are kind of like really high inflation, and people are like incentivized to use things as tether as kind of like a store of value? Well, more than store of value, I think um, it's a um, transfer uh, value method, mm -hmm. uh, better than the actual one because uh, you can move money worldwide using uh, crypto without restrictions or with less restrictions than the financial traditional system. Um, of course, when you are from a country that have a hyperinflation like Argentina, Venezuela, now in Colombia, we are expecting a superior inflation and uh, devaluation of the local currency. You try to find alternative like the US dollar, um, when you don't find a local alternative for using the traditional way, you need to jump into new financial ecosystem like blockchain and these kind of technologies. So we are trying to be the vehicle to serve uh, on this unserved clients that today don't have another option to take use to our accounts. And we are connecting with the ECUs through the car, for example, that it's a common uh, payment method 
that it's a Web2 experience, but with, with, with Web3 uh, in the back end. So we are delivering a simple uh, but efficiently experience for people can use their money with all the freedom and with uh, the benefits of the blockchain and everything. As you guys are kind of pioneering like a new style of fintech startup, have you guys met any resistance from like traditional uh, finance, like, you know, like banks not wanting to <laughs> give you guys service or anything like that? A lot, a lot. You know, when we start with the, with the business model, uh, mm -hmm. no one of the banks we were working with understand why uh, new fintech gets uh, millions of dollars in capital funding for allocation into in which factoring operations. That was, um, uh, you know, a challenge to educate the providers into the financial system. And now they understand what we are doing. Of course, it was a really hard job to get that. Uh, but, you, I, you know, the next step that we are planning to do is to incorporate into the financial traditional system. We are connecting directly with different banks in some countries of Latin America. I, I didn't want to mention the, the name on the institutions, but we are planning to announce that for the end of the year because we are directly connecting our services into banking institutions. So that will help to uh, get more confidence and attracting new uh, non-crypto users to use the experience and the benefits on the blockchain, basically. Why did you guys specifically choose El Salvador? Well, you know, it's the first country on launching a specific regulation for cryptocurrencies and where uh, cryptocurrencies are uh, local currency, uh, accepted as uh, monetary uh, method. So we request the license uh, on Bitcoin providing, and now we are requesting and getting two different additional licenses for commercializing all kinds of digital assets and even for issue new assets. So I think the regulation uh, it's more flexible and clear than other jurisdictions. Um, we have the uh, like you know. The, the, the contacts and everything to get that, and we just execute. Yeah, no, I can see how the favorable regulations make a lot of sense for, for your business. What about like these other countries that you guys are offering services in throughout Latin America? I know a lot of countries in Latin America don't really have clear cut regulations. Have you faced any regulatory hurdles? Mm, no, and this is why we are offering international services from El Salvador requesting the passport. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we cannot uh, serve any client using, for example, the local ID in Colombia because mm -hmm. it's not a local service, it's an international service. Okay. But yeah, th this is because we don't have any regulation or any clear legal framework to these countries for incorporate directly to do the operation from the country. If we see... Uh, you know, that the regulation advance in other countries, of course, we will be there. Regulation, we re regulated at that country, but we don't see that very soon. Yet. With these, these services that you're offering as international services, like what's the distinction with them being international versus like a, a local service? Like, could you explain that? I don't really understand so much. Well, basically, it's the legal framework. Um, if you read the terms and conditions, you are basically going to El Salvador to use a Salvadorian product or, or a Panamian product like a car, um, mm -hmm. but with your passport. It's not a product served or delivered into your country. So if you are in Colombia, you are going digital to El Salvador to take the product and to Panama to receive the car. Okay. Okay. So cool. we are basically regulated by these different jurisdictions, mainly by El Salvador, uh, which is the complement of all the offer. Mm -hmm. um, 
Of course, if you need to make a request or something like that to any authority, you need to go to El Salvador authorities. Okay. And then with Panama, I know it's like a financial center. What's the regulation like there? Are they like becoming more forward facing uh, for crypto? There's no regulation. <laughs> There's no, no regulation. Okay. No regulation about crypto in Panama yet. Um, we hope uh, in the coming months with the new president, we can have uh, some more clear uh, on that way. But uh, the only thing we do from Panama right now, it's uh, the car issue because it's okay. issued under a trust regulated in Panama. So okay. the assets on the, on the car are protected by a trust that is registered in Panama. Okay. And then we discussed how, how some banks are kind of standoffish towards crypto services. It, in Panama is like a banking center. Are they like open-minded to crypto or are they kind of viewing it like from a distance as mm. well? I, I think they are in a distance right now uh, because they don't have a clear regulation. Uh, mm. But I, I I'm, would be very happy if some banks add to the crypto friendly list very soon. Mm. Okay. And then other countries in Central America, how are they viewing the uh, Bitcoin law and the digital securities law that El Salvador has implemented? Do they view it favorably? Well, I think many countries are trying to copy the same uh, regulation that El Salvador implements. I think it's a great idea to have like a standard uh, for almost um, issue some kind of values into uh, the blockchain, like the tokenization on different projects and everything. Um, it would be very cool to discover new initiative of regulation in different countries uh, in, in Central America and South America. Um, even I think they are waiting for the clear announcement of the regulation in the U.S. to take the second step that, you know, we, we should have in a clear uh, scenario for the end of this year in different countries. Okay. And which country uh, do you think will be like the next one to, to have crypto regulation Brazil? in America? I, I think Brazil ha have right now some um, draft on the specific regulation. Um, I see an advantage on Bolivia that um, I think the last week present like a, a, a change on the law uh, based on the crypto concept. Um, I think Ecuador maybe can have an initiative on try to do something uh, like El Salvador and they have an advantage because their economy is in dollars right now. Um, I know in Colombia it's working, the central bank with Ripple for doing something with the CBDC. So, you know, it's the new standard and we will see in the next coming two years so many countries um, accepting the, the, you know, the, the crypto industry that it's uh, here for stay. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about, Effie, that is important for the audience to know? I want to add something. We can okay. serve Latin American people living in the U.S. We cannot serve American citizens um, because our structure is designed for operate outside the U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we can serve Latin American people living in the U.S. and they can uh, use the service for sending international transfers to their families and friends into Latin American countries using sale, ACH transfers and everything. Um, they can buy Bitcoin and everything using the platform. Um, you know, we are open to receive all the clients if they want to request the car. Uh, the car is taking uh, about 10 days to be in any country in Latin America or even in the U.S. too. Uh, but remember, only for Latin American people right now. And then how much uh, of the remittance use case have you guys seen? Is that a big portion yeah, of crypto usage? It, it's a big one because uh, we can compete at half of the cost like other competitors in the market like Western Union, MoneyGram or other big players uh, in terms of cost and in terms of efficiency, of 
course, we are better because we use blocking. So it's basically instant. I know there's a huge amount of remittances that are headed back from both the US and Europe to Latin America. So I could see it being a huge use case. But in the past, I know several different startups have tried to focus on the remittance use case. And I don't think it's gone so well for them. I think like even MoneyGram, which is a Western Union style like money service to send money, uh, tried to implement crypto and then that for, for okay, well. We, we are open to onboard more partners in that way because we use different partners with different licenses in different countries to connect mm -hmm. the sender and receiver uh, using third parties. So oh. we are the infrastructure for connecting, for example, the MoneyGram in the US with the bank in Ecuador, and you will receive and pass through USDT, for example, for doing the international traffic okay so it's basically a non and off ramp marketplace where you can use different providers for receiving and sending international money. wow that's super interesting um andres can you give the uh social media profiles for epi and then also uh the website how people can get their hands on the card yeah sure all that kind of stuff it's very easy to get the car. You just take five minutes and you just need $10 on deposit in USDT for requesting that. Um, you can find us in Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, all the social media as EFI Finance, EFY Finance. Um, the website is EFI.finance or EFIFinance.com. You can use okay. even both. And of course, we are happy to receive more um, clients and serving as, as well with, with both. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Andres, for joining me on the show. It was a pleasure to interview you about EFI. Thank you for having me today and happy to participate on this podcast.